Hi everyone! Oh, it's so great to be with you guys and just to share a bit. Uh, we are excited to be with you guys today. So, um, yeah, we just want to give some feedback. Um, Marina, tell us uh, what, how did you feel and what did you experience when we just came here? I think when he first came here, it I didn't know Croatian or English. It was very difficult and 18 months later, I knew Croatian and English. And could your teacher speak English? No. <laughs> so it was a difficult thing. Yes. And um, my f uh, I had a lot of bullies, uh, but now they are, they are my friends. Mm. So you treated them well and you went, you went over their hearts, right? Yes, I did. Oh, well done. Super. Uh, and Abigail, tell us about grade five. When we came here, you started with grade five. Yeah. Uh, and what about grade five was difficult? Uh, oof, uh, I th well, I have to say that grade five, it's a very, very difficult grade. Even the locals uh, have a really, really st a big struggle with it. And everyone in my class, it was uh, for them, it was very, very hard. Um, um, yeah, um, but at the end, I I learned creation and I um, I made a lot of friends and I also had good grades. Um, but I only did that uh, with the help of of God and also so many teachers and people just. Um, helped us and yeah um, I could definitely not have um, had uh, good grades without that that's for sure that's so true we had we had a lady just coming to us and saying she would help Abigail and oh my goodness just uh, someone to help with creation um, in, and, the, and the just the language barrier that, that was just amazing God really really showed himself and um, came through in so many ways we can tell you story upon story uh, of his provision and uh, just amazing things happen. So Abigail, you also had a, a, a difficulty with your friends. Tell us about oh, that. Oh yeah. Um, so they just like the one day they like me and then the second day they're just so mean. I don't know why, it's, it's so weird. And then the uh, day after that, they're, uh, yeah, so that's just like a pattern going on and on and on. And then they just talk about me um, behind my back and yeah, but um, I did not really like that. But on the end, I also, um, I won their, their hearts and yeah, now we're very, very good friends, all of us. Yeah, that's amazing. And she just, you just showed them, showed them God's love and didn't yeah. do the same back what they did to that to her that's just beautiful we're really proud of these two they can speak Croatian oh my goodness we are so jealous but they worked so hard and uh, just walking through all of this just uh, taking it on like like look ma making it look easy um, it's been a tough time for us but um, we are really grateful and thankful for God's provision and just the way that he came through for us so we are excited about the season ahead we are grateful for you guys um, your prayers uh, really carry us through so many times and we feel it uh, and we want to cheer you guys on. Uh, I remember we got first got here. So, there were so many lessons. We've, we've learned so much. Uh, I think we've grown and learned so many things. And one of the things I realized was not to take things for granted, guys. We yeah. took things for granted in South Africa that we didn't even realize it. Uh, but we are so grateful and thankful for so many small things. Um, we, we, uh, we, are, we miss the children's church, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we go to some of the churches, we just say, oh, mom, can you remember what happened in, in South Africa and we tell stories about that and the foundation is still here it's in their lives it's been built uh, and we speak about that often but we really miss it and I want to I want to tell you that you have something special with the children's church cheering you guys on uh, it's really incredible we miss it we miss you guys uh, but we really want to say that the children's church are doing a great work and keep on going uh, keep on doing that building uh, the gospel into the children's life lives uh, it makes a big difference and not everyone has that what you have so be grateful for that um, yeah it's going well with us uh, we really miss you guys and we send you a lot of love uh, we pray for you guys we hope that you stand strong in the Lord God is really faithful he's good and God always comes through isn't God the God of the impossible he is a we have many times just said say God did the impossible so thank you for that uh, um, that you are good father and we pray that for all you guys uh, and I hope that you have a good day okay bless you guys bye bye, bye.
Hi family, what a privilege to be with you guys, even if it's virtually. Uh, it's such a privilege to share with you guys, and especially on this beautiful day. I mean, it's Reach Week, and we are gathering together to remind ourselves of the vision that we're part of. And I remember how I told Yaku in the beginning when he just became part of the team. I said, Yaku, either I'm going to go and you're going to stay, or you are going to go and I'm going to stay, but not, not both of us can stay. And also not both of us can go. <laughs> okay, so here we are a few years later and we are on the other side of this vision and telling you that we are all part of something that is bigger than ourselves. What, what a privilege it is. I remember how Martin and I, since the beginning of our marriage, were reminded often that our marriage is part of something bigger than ourselves. It's not just about the two of us. And when we got a family with our beautiful children, we were reminded that our family is part of something bigger than ourselves. We are not just our own little family trying to make ends meet. We are taken up in a vision, Jesus, that's greater than ourselves. And remember, as we shared with you guys since the beginning, that a light that shines to the ends of the earth shines brightest at home. So when we live on mission, when we go on mission, when we pray and trust the Lord and go and give missionally and give financially, our lights are shining brighter because when we come back home, we're reminded that our little worlds is just taken up in a bigger hole. Never forget that. And it's such a fitting psalm to read today. Psalm 67, which is also known as the missionary psalm. It says, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That you, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. What a beautiful psalm. And this is such a reminder on why are we on mission. And I'm going to unpack three basic elements from this passage. It starts by... May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. The first element of why we are on mission is because God makes himself known. Now in this passage it says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Selah. Selah is the pause and calmly think about it. Consider it. So let us pause. We all know this passage. We all know this, this declaration. May the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Especially when you grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church and the Reverend would stretch out his hands with his black cloak and he will pray over us and he will bless us and he will send us off with this beautiful, beautiful passage. Pause and think about it. God makes himself known he reveals himself to us god allows himself to be known he wants to know us and he wants to be known by us it's not like the other gods where people have to please this god whom they have no way of reconciling with and they hope that he'll be satisfied no our god is not just asking us to lay down things he is revealing himself in Psalm 103, it writes that God revealed his character unto Moses and the good deeds to the people of Israel. God reveals himself. You can know him. And when we know him and when we understand his face and we enjoy the intimacy with him, we cannot but live it out. Selah. Pause. Think about what he has done for you. Think about how he has revealed himself how he has answered your prayers, how he knows you. What a privilege. And then it goes over to the second part. It says that your way may be known on the earth, your saving power among all nations. So he blesses us 
and he's gracious to us and he makes his face shine upon us. He makes himself known that your way may be known on the earth. So there is a condition onto this passage. It's not just that we enjoy the face of God. It's that his way may be known. Now, some people will say, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. So he revealed himself because there's this condition. We just have to do something. No, no, it's not that way. If Moses saw the character of God and he said, I will not go when you're not going with us. I don't want the blessings. I want you. We know that when we see him, there is so much more that we receive that we cannot keep it for ourselves. If you see mission as an obligation, maybe it's time to seek his face. Because if you see him, you will want to make his way and his heart and his face known. May uh, that your way may be known on earth and your saving power among all nations. In Psalm 98, it says that God revealed his salvation and his righteousness in the sight of of the nations when god became a man in jesus christ and he died on that cross he did it in the sight of the nations yes it's for you as an individual but you are just part of a bigger picture may all the nations know him that's why we're on mission so why do we do this because god makes himself known the second part is let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth now, this is such a beautiful passage. And the second aspect that we see from God, first one, God makes himself known. The second part is that he leads justly. He is a just God and he leads the people with equity, with standard, with integrity, with justice. So that's the God that we serve. And because of that, it says the nations will be glad when they see his justice. Now, Let's just think about this. God is a just God. He is only good. He is a holy God. He is holy. And His holiness is the attributes of attributes. It describes everything of God. His holiness is the description of His love. Jesus and God is not just God. God is not just love. He is holy love. He is not just gracious. He is wholly gracious. He is not just forgiving. He is wholly forgiving. It describes everything about him. So he's not just just. He is wholly just. It describes the way he is just. There is no mistake in him. So why is this important? Why will the nations be glad? Because his justice is just. So if he is just, he will sometimes require of us also to be corrected. He will also require of us sometimes to be reprimanded, to be called back in line. He will bring justice in our lives when we have sin, which is unjust. He will give direction. Sometimes he will always also require of us to sacrifice, to give, to go, to surrender. He will call justice in our lives when we become selfish. So we are also on the receiving end, but he is also righteous and he is good and he is just. So whatever we ask of him and whatever he asks of us, he will fulfill and he will provide. He is with us. Now, why is this important? Why will the nations be glad? Just think of this. We know in other parts of our lives that they are also on the receiving end of our lives, a people that require justice, people that require that we should give, that we should sacrifice, that we should surrender, that we should pay a price. There are sometimes people over us, leadership, government, uh, authority, and they require things of us. But it's not always just. It's not always in standard. It's not always with integrity. So they demand something of us, which brings destruction, which, which demands more and more and more. And that brings bondage. That brings oppression. That brings fear. That brings anger. That triggers so many things of us. Why do we feel that? Because we feel 
justice that's brought that is unjust and unjust and not in standard. But the nations will be glad when they see the justice of God. What a privilege to know that God will require of us sometimes to surrender. But we know that he is just good, that whatever he asks of him, of whatever he asks of us will be just good. We can trust him. You can trust him. And because we see his justice, the nations will be glad. Now, guys, we, it's, it's a no-brainer to say that the world is upside down in terms of leadership and corruption. We don't have a leadership and a corruption problem. We have a justice problem because we have a God problem. Because we do not want to trust God when He asks of us to surrender. When He brings justice into our lives. But may we be the nations. May we be the people that bow our knees, that bend our knees because we've seen him and we have the privilege of knowing him and we allow his holy justice to find its way in our hearts and we shine our lights to the ends of the earth. Nothing we have is our own. It belongs to him because we have him. And when we live with the selfless lives, he will be glorified and the people will get to know him. Now, why this is important, we're standing on the ground in Croatia. They were fighting for centuries to find their freedom and they were always under communistic rule and oppressed by nations. And they were turned upside down and inside out and they were emptied. And finally, they came into agreement with Serbia and uh, with other nations when they formed the Kingdom of Croatia and which later became Yugoslavia. And what happened? The leadership of Serbia took all the leadership positions and they made themselves the head office. And because that was made the head office, they decided on how the resources and everything will be spread and how people will share it. And they appointed people according to their favor. What was the end result? That there was a lack of balance. There was a lack of justice. It wasn't fair. And it ended up in oppression and it ended up in people being um, in dismay and they learned a learned helplessness just knowing that you cannot challenge any system and because of that it ended up in one of the most gruesome wars that has been recorded with most of the the, the worst atrocities imaginable that even journalists that's following war said there's some stuff that they saw here that should not be seen that's what happens when people will not bring in the hope of the Lord Jesus. That's what happens when man is put in control, when knees will not bow in front of the throne of Jesus. To use a practical example, here we are standing in Croatia. Croatia has been under communistic rule and oppressive leaders for centuries. And they fought and they desired their own freedom. And they came to a place where they have made an alliance with Serbia and other nations to form Yugoslavia so that they can find their own voice and their own freedom. But even in that, having nations standing with them, they came to a place where Serbia became like the head office and they made the decision on who will get what, what resources will be allocated to whom, and in what way it will be distributed and then who will be appointed into positions. And in the end, what happened? Serbia um, uh, brought favor to themselves and they appointed people of their liking and they stopped appointing people of other parts of Yugoslavia and it brought a deeper oppression. And even in that, the people stood up and they started fighting and it ended up in one of the worst wars recorded where some of the leading journalists that's following war said that there are some things that cannot be unseen and should not be seen. Some of the worst atrocities. They finally won their freedom, but yet today they are still wanting. Yet today they are still searching. They have faced oppression. They have faced an unjust justice. But by fighting for freedom will not give you freedom. There is only one standard. 
There's only one lawgiver. There's only one that we can trust that will bring in. And there is today still among the people a learned helplessness because of communism, an oppression, a fear, a just a desire to follow the rules because otherwise you will be on the receiving end of injustice. But as the hope is coming in, people are receiving the hope of Jesus and the nations are being glad. The people are rejoicing when they taste the goodness of God. Our problem is not a government problem. We have a God problem. And the only way we can do it is like we are doing and several others are doing is making our ways into the nations to make that our home, to incarnate, to become Christ and become flesh among the people so that the word can become flesh, just like Christ came into our world. And in that way, we bring the hope. We share the goodness of God. And we see the people rejoice and the nations will be glad because they will see justice who is personified in a person. And the last part that we see, the earth has yielded its increase and God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. So the first aspect why we are missional is because God makes himself known. The second aspect is because God leads with justice. And the third aspect is that God provides. The earth has yielded its increase and God shall bless us. He provides for our every needs. He is our provider. Everything belongs to him. But he does not only provide our physical needs, what we need to eat and where, but he also provides in our deepest needs for security and significance and meaning and joy and comfort and control. He fulfills our primary and secondary needs. But the, the spin-off of this place is saying that God shall bless us. In the other parts he said, let all the peoples praise you, Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. But in this regard, let all the ends of the earth fear him. May they fear Him. May they see Him in all His holiness, in His beauty, in His radiance. May they see Him as the source. And may the goodness of God lead people to repentance so that they will see Him and tremble because they know that He is good and they are not worthy of this goodness. They are not worthy of it because as the goodness of God comes close, it's like a light shining in our lives and it's revealing the things that remain hidden and we will fear him because he is only good and great and holy. So we are on mission because God makes himself known and he brings justice and he provides in our every need. And the amazing thing is this is all fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ where Jesus Christ became the visible image of the invisible God. Do you want to know what God is like? Read the Gospels. Take your Bible, and there are four books of the Gospels. And go and read it. Unpack it, and look at the life of Jesus. He is the visible image of an invisible God. You see the love of God, the grace of God, the patience of God, the holiness of God, the greater works of God. You look at the life of Jesus. God made himself known by becoming a man in Jesus Christ and coming into our worlds and living among us. To become like us, to face what we faced and to take that into the depths and the belly of death and to raise up victorious and to say he offers forgiveness and new life, but also purpose to everybody who calls on his name. God made himself known in Jesus. But it's not just that. He came to fulfill justice. Because Jesus did not just come to live this earth and walk this earth. He became the fulfillment and he paid the penalty for sin. He did not just brush off or shrug off our sins. He fulfilled the penalty of sin so that the penalty of sin will be broken over our lives. He paid the legal price to bring justice. He never bent on justice, even if it cost himself. 
So yes, Jesus died on the cross to show his love, but that wasn't the primary reason. He had to die because of our sinfulness. But thank God that he died and he rose again and he is victorious. He is the resurrected king and the, the grave is empty. And because of that, there can be justice. We have this justice in our lives. And we can die to ourselves now and stand up and walk victorious lives in him. But he is also the provider. Jesus came to die to fulfill every need of our lives. And like I explained earlier, Jesus, like a good father, knows that when the child is hungry, he will offer up his own food to say, let the child eat. He will rather go without food than having the child go without food. That is what every father will do that has love in his heart. He will love his children at the expense of himself. That's the way Jesus loved us. By giving up heaven to come to earth, by giving up his kingship, by becoming a slave, by giving up life to die so that we will be raised to new life. But he provides in every need. There is nothing that you need to hold on to because he is the source. He is our hope and we have him. He is the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. That is why we live on mission. That is why we have everything that's needed. Yes, we're in the nations now as a family. And yes, we have needs. And yes, sometimes we are challenged to the core. And yes, sometimes Marna told me that we made a mistake and we have to go back home. Other times I told Marna, you're right, we have to go home. And then she reprimands me again. Yes, we all face the needs, but so do you. He is the just God who makes himself known and provides. And as I end with this, this is a missionary psalm calling us to go to the nations. One day we're going to stand in front of the throne of God. He's going to ask us two primary questions. The first question is, have you received Jesus? Yes or no? If you said no, say no there. It means that you will spend eternity without him because you chose to live a life without him. He asked you to give, to lay down your will for him and follow his will. But if you did not, you followed your will and he would say, then you go and live out your own will apart from me. But he has made himself known to you. But you chose to take a different path. So the first question we will be asked is, did you receive Jesus? Yes or no? That will determine where you spend eternity. The second question we will be asked is, what did you do with Jesus? Were you the good steward that went and shared and invested and knew that you have to multiply this good steward, this good treasure and talent that you've been given, this gift who is Jesus, did you share it? Did you multiply it? Did you carry it out to the nations? Did you make him known? So the first question is, did you receive him? Yes or no? That determines where you spend eternity. The second question is, what did you do with Jesus? That determines how we spend eternity. Man, don't keep Jesus for yourself. Don't hide him because you know that God is a righteous and a just God. Make him known because you know that the nations will be glad. They will rejoice when they see him. Father, I pray. Thank you that we can be part of something bigger than ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that you make yourself known. You've made yourself known throughout creation, but you're still making yourself known. You reveal yourself, but you are also a just God and a holy God. Lord, and besides that, you are also our source and you provide for every need. I pray for us as a church, Lord, may we remember that our marriages, our single lives for those who are single, our families, our workplaces, our resources. It's so much bigger than just what we have. We're part of something greater. 
you have made yourself known. May you be known to the ends of this earth. As this passage is saying, that your way may be known on earth and your saving power among the nations. Lord, as we make you known, reveal yourself and may you be glorified. May this church be strengthened to pray, to give and to go. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hope you were encouraged today, but also convicted. I hope you're reminded that you're part of something greater than yourselves. Thank you guys for investing in us, for believing in us, for sending us, for partnering with us. Thank you for each and every person that is still uh, part of our lives and walking with us. We are so grateful for you and we bless you and never forget the vision that you are part of. We love you guys. Bless you.